year to move forward with your writing. Anything else? Good question. Yeah. Um, when they want to make this kind of funny story into a movie, how does that feel like? Like, how do you come about with it? How did it come about? Um, okay, well, how it came about was, uh, I mean, there, the easy question, the easy answer is uh, this sort of two-part question. How did, what did it feel like? It felt great. I felt lucky. I felt lucky because the movie, I don't know how many of you guys have seen the movie. How many of you have seen the movie having read the book versus not read the book? The movie's pretty true to the tone and feel of the book. And a lot of times that doesn't happen with movies. They just butcher the book. And the directors, I felt, were faithful to the style of the book. So I felt very lucky because that doesn't happen to a lot of writers. And I felt very lucky that the movie was getting made at all because that doesn't happen to a lot of writers either. And it's great to have a movie made of your book because now like, I go to Walmart and do they have my book? No, they don't have my book. All they have at Walmart is Nicholas Sparks. That's it. <laughs> um, but do they have the movie based? Yes, they do. You know, They do. So you, you really get to a wider audience. How it came about, basically a producer uh, named Kevin Misher handed a copy of, it's kind of a funny story, can you hold your cop copy up please? Yeah, that cover, yeah hold that up so she can, there you go, that cover, that's the OG cover, see? <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, because this cover didn't exist. This is the movie cover. So probably four years ago, that book was handed to Brian Fleck and Anna Bowden, who are the directors of the film. And they read it, and they really liked it, and they felt like it would make a good movie. And so that was really how it came about. It came about because the directors read the book and wanted to do it and felt like it was an opportunity for them to make a good film. Uh, that, that's, the, there are more details, but that's essentially what happened. Any other questions? Yes? No, thanks a lot. I don't feel like my parents. I live in California now. I moved out to, um, to Los Angeles about um, a year ago on the Super Bowl. I took a flight on the Super Bowl Sunday. Um, so I don't still live with my parents. I felt like I had to get out of New York at some point because I feel like the people who live in New York their entire lives at about 40, like there's a certain kind of psychosis that sets in, and I didn't want it to happen. I felt like I had to live somewhere else and prove that I could live somewhere else. So I'm very proud to say that I don't live with my parents. Thank you. <laughs> yes. How long did it take you to write comics? It's kind of a funny story. It was written in a period of about five weeks, um, and it was a very intense time in my life. Don't think that should mean that you should be able to write a book in five weeks. I, I, had, just went, I had just gone through this intense experience at the hospital. And remember, I was under pressure for that contract, right? And I thought, you have to write this. If you don't write it, it'll go away. I was worried it would go away. So like, I wrote the first 50 pages all at once, and then I just kept going. And for like a month, I just, I just woke up, drank tea, listened to John Coltrane, took naps, and wrote the book. And it all came out. No, I got out of the hospital and probably started writing it a week later. Thank you. Yes. That's a great question. The thing is, I'm a very open person and I talk too much anyway. <laughs> so I feel like if I hung out with you for four hours, you'd know more than you wanted to know about me anyway. So you might as well just read the book and let me earn a little money. <laughs> yes? Um, what was the book in the bag folder about? What was the book in the bad folder about? The book in the bad folder was called The Ellaru Project. It was about a guy, teenage guy, whose little sister invents a SpongeBob SquarePants type cartoon character called The Ellaru that's combination elephant kangaroo and it becomes very popular. And that was it. That was all I had. <laughs> yes? Is there anyone you've considered a mentor? Is there anyone I've considered a mentor? a great question. The only person I could consider a mentor in terms of storytelling is my father. My father is a really amazing storyteller. 
when it comes to spoken stories, he's still the absolute best. He's the best. If he starts telling you a story, you, you can't turn away until he's finished. But if he tries to write it down, he's terrible. So I, <laughs> in many ways, try to write for him. Yes? Okay, this deals with like, um, more chill. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I read that. And, um, okay, well, I first got introduced like a few years ago. I was actually at swim, swim camp, and this kid had a shirt, like the squib shirt. And I was like, what is that? He's like, I can't tell you. Google it. I was like, no, just tell me. And he's like, I can't tell you. Like, did you mean for it to be like a secret thing, or was this kid just strange? <laughs> I guarantee the kid was strange. Well, <laughs> he, is it a he? Yeah. He was a diehard fan of my work, so he's got to be a little weird. Um, <laughs> the Squip t-shirts, I'll explain how that worked. It actually kind of ties in because while I was going through a lot of what I was going through before I wrote it, it's kind of a funny story. One of the things that I was doing was I was trying to promote Be More Chill. Be More Chill is a guy in high school who has a pill in his brain that tells him how to be cool all the time. The pill is called a Squip. Me and my friend, <clears throat> the same friend who told me about the fear, meaning false evidence appearing real, who is now a, he's kind of a folk healer guitar player <laughs> who lives in, in Woodstock, New York, great guy. He, um, he and I came up with this promotional campaign idea for Be More Chill based on the squip as the pill that makes you cool. We thought we could create a bunch of websites that made it look as if the Squip were real and then give out stickers that said Squip, Google it, and t-shirts that said Squip, Google it. And it was a pretty brilliant plan and the book company gave us money to do it and we made, there aren't that many of those shirts in existence. I mean, there are probably a hundred, fifty to a hundred of those shirts in existence and they aren't being made anymore. So if you can track one down, good for you. But I. I don't know how, I can't help you with that. And, and we made thousands and thousands of stickers. And we gave them out to readers, and readers would just put them up and take pictures of them and send them to us. And we had all these websites, um, uh, uh, squippers against squips and celebritysquip.com, which would tell you which celebrities had squips. And um, squippers against squips was people who used to have squips but now stopped and were warning other people. and like a parental advisory board about squips. We came up with 25 websites, and all of the content on the websites was actually created by readers. So it was a, if I say so myself, kind of innovative and brilliant marketing campaign, but some people didn't like it because in a way we were tricking people. I mean, there were plenty of people who came to those websites and really thought that squips were real and emailed us asking for the pill that would make them cool. And then we had to respond and say, it's not real, but welcome to the project, and would you like to contribute? Um, there was an article in the New York Times about it, though, and it never quite tipped the way. Have you heard of the phrase the tipping point? Uh, the idea being that, you know, at some point things become viral, right? We really wanted it to. It was a viral campaign, and it never quite tipped over to become the huge blockbuster campaign that we hoped it would be, uh, in part because I had too much going on in my head at the time. I wasn't focused on it because I was. <laughs> confronting the fact that I could no longer like eat and sleep and like my body was messing with me and I was depressed and um, I, I wonder sometimes how successful the campaign would have been if I devoted myself more to it. But things will all turn out for the best, hopefully, and now uh, it's part of the history of the book Be More Chill and I have a wonderful video on my website of all the people who have the script t-shirts and the stickers and if you check it out I think you'll be really entertained by it. So just go to my website, go to the FAQ section and look up Squip.